Hello, and welcome to this video presentation on postpartum hemorrhage. My name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. The objectives for this presentation are described here. Postpartum hemorrhage is heavy bleeding that occurs associated with a vaginal or cesarean delivery. Most of the time, the bleeding occurs very shortly after delivery, but postpartum hemorrhage can also occur hours, days, or even weeks later. This is a life-threatening condition that must be managed rapidly and appropriately. The traditional definitions for postpartum hemorrhage include a blood loss greater than 500 ml associated with a vaginal delivery or greater than 1000 ml during or after a cesarean section. Because it is very difficult to visually estimate an accurate amount of blood loss, the clinical assessment of hemorrhage through vital signs, change in hemoglobin, and other considerations is more reliable. The differential diagnosis for postpartum hemorrhage that occurs within 24 hours after delivery is listed here. The most common cause is uterine atony, but genital tract lacerations and retained placental tissue in the uterus are also common. Because postpartum hemorrhage is a life-threatening condition, it should be considered an emergency. Immediate evaluation of the patient should be performed. Upon confirmation of a large amount of vaginal bleeding, a number of actions should be initiated simultaneously with assistance from the healthcare team. An assessment of the patient's vital signs should be taken. Two large bore IVs should be inserted with administration of crystalloid fluids. A Foley catheter should also be placed to monitor urine output, which is a sensitive gauge of intravascular volume. Baseline CBC, type and cross with 2 to 4 units of packed red blood cells, and consideration of coagulation studies such as PT, INR, PTT, and fibrinogen should be ordered. The chart should also be examined with a quick review of pertinent patient history. The patient should be moved into the dorsal lithotomy position and good lighting should be obtained in preparation for a pelvic examination. Important aspects of the patient's history during a postpartum hemorrhage are listed here. The physical examination includes vital signs with urine output, assessment of the patient's general appearance and skin color, abdominal palpation looking for a firm uterus or a distended bladder, and a speculum and bimanual examination. On speculum exam, the vulva, vagina, and cervix should be closely evaluated for active bleeding. By manual exam, will reveal if the uterus is contracted appropriately or if uterine atony is present. Uterine atony is the most likely finding during patient examination. Atony is a soft or boggy consistency noted on palpation of the uterus. The uterus is not contracted after delivery like it should be, and exposed blood vessels associated with a placental separation site are bleeding freely. Management of postpartum uterine atony associated with hemorrhage includes a vigorous bimanual examination illustrated in the top cartoon. Any blood clots present in the cervix or lower uterine segment should be manually removed and the bladder should be emptied if a Foley catheter is not already in place. The presence of blood clots or a full bladder can prohibit proper contraction of the uterus. Medications that can be given to encourage uterine contraction are listed here. Most uterine atony will respond to these measures and bleeding will decrease considerably. If heavy bleeding continues, a surgical specialist should be contacted and the patient should be transferred to the operating room for uterine packing or other surgical management. Identification of risk factors for uterine atony can help healthcare providers be prepared for postpartum hemorrhage and should be considered in patients with the following characteristics during delivery. If the uterus is already noted to be firm on examination but significant bleeding persists, the clinician should perform a careful evaluation of the vagina and cervix for lacerations. If a bleeding laceration is identified, pressure should be applied for temporary hemostasis while preparations are made for repair. If a hematoma is present, it will require drainage if it is rapidly expanding or if the patient is hemodynamically unstable from blood loss. If uterine atony and pelvic lacerations have been ruled out, the next step is to rule out retained placental tissue in the uterus. Bleeding from a retained placenta can occur hours to weeks after delivery and is detected using pelvic ultrasound. Management includes consultation of a specialist for removal. 
This is the end of the presentation on postpartum hemorrhage.